Have you ever started a diet, lost few kilos, and then suddenly nothing? You're still eating the same food, you're still counting every single calorie, but the scale will not budge. Even worse, you are feeling hungrier, more tired, and somehow the weights start creeping back on. This isn't just about willpower, and it is not your fault. It's your biology, and the system behind it is called the negative feedback run by your brain. In this video, I will show you how your body fights to protect its fat storage, and why understanding this hidden system is the first step to escaping the weight regain trap. I am Dr. Kataiba Almeri, weight loss surgeon, helping you understand obesity and your health. If you are interested in the science behind weight and the real solution that goes beyond diet myths, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future videos. Let's start with the one signal you have definitely felt hunger. It's not just an empty stomach. It's one of the most powerful survival tools that your body has and it is carefully controlled by your brain, specifically a small part of the brain that's called the hypothalamus. Think of it as your body's thermostat, but instead of regulating the heat, it does regulate the fat storage. Now, how does it know how much fat your body has? This is where a hormone called leptin comes in. The leptin is a hormone that's made by your fat cells. The more fat you carry, the more leptin you will produce. It's like, um, let's say, a constant signal reporting back to the brain about how much fat it does have. Here is what happens when you start losing fat, say, for instance, by dieting. Leptin will drop and the hypothalamus will sense that and get the signal, warning, we are losing all the fuel reserves. So your brain will switch the hunger up again. But how does it do it? By increasing another hormone called ghrelin. So ghrelin is the hunger hormone in our bodies. That is the one that will make you crave food, particularly high calorie food. So the more fat you lose, the more hunger you will have. And this is a self-preservation mechanism your body has. Think of it like the thermostat in the house. When the house gets cold, the thermostats will kick in. The boiler will fires up and the house will warm up again by raising the temperature inside the pipes. The body does the same. When fat stores fall, hunger kicks in to bring your fat levels back to what your brain will perceive as the normal level. Now, let's flip things around. Let's say you have a, a big party, dinner, lots of barbecue, lots of meat and different types of food and you are feeling full, really full. What will happen next day? And intentionally, you will find that you don't feel like eating much next day. And that is exactly the opposite mechanism when you try to intentionally lose weight then suddenly the thermostat will fight us again this is why most diets eventually feel harder not because you have failed but because your biology is doing exactly what it's meant to do it's protecting you from losing your fat reserves. But here is the thing, it's just the first lever that your body has to balance its energy in, energy out by controlling how much energy in you will need. Your body has another as clever lever and that's how it controls how much you burn from the energy you have. We will talk about this next. So we have seen how your body increases hunger when you lose weight as a way to control your calories in. That is only half the picture. The second lever your body pulls, it changes how much energy you burn, especially at rest. Let's go back to the analogy I used in a previous video. Imagine your body as a wooden house. There is a fireplace inside that's your metabolism and each day you receive a delivery of wood locks, that's the food you eat. Now let's talk about two scenarios. In the first scenario, you are getting too many wood logs. What do you do? You throw extra logs on the fire, let it burn hotter, let the house be so warm, there's no problem. And when there is more than you could burn, you store the extra logs in the corners of the house, just like your body stores the fat in different parts of it. Now in the second scenario, your deliveries shrink. You, the truck driver who brings the wood logs usually, maybe he's off sick, so they couldn't deliver the wood logs to you every day. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna try to burn fewer logs in the day. You're trying to turn down the flames and preserve as much of these wood logs as you can. Your body does exactly the same when you are on a diet because the body will sense shortage of food. So what it will try to do, it will try to drop the use of the energy 
that comes from the food by reducing your basal metabolic rate. That's the energy that you burn at rest just to keep you alive. As you saw in the last video, the basal metabolic rate makes a big proportion of the energy use, making up to 70 to 75 percent of your energy use. One of the most striking examples comes from a landmark study by Professor Rudy Liebel at the Columbia University. He published his findings in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is one of the most prestigious medical journals. So what he did is he followed a group of healthy volunteers under very strict conditions in the hospital. So they lived in his hospital hospital and he was providing them with food that is well monitored and he kept an eye on them for two years. In the first period he overfed them and what he noticed is that obviously all the volunteers have gained weight and their basal metabolic rate went up as they gained weight as the body was trying to burn off all that excessive food that they eat and then what he did is that he put them on a calorie restrictive diet and then what he noticed is that as they started to lose weight their basal metabolic rate dropped a lot this is the body adjusting how much energy it uses at rest which makes the most part of the energy use the body has going up and down based on how much food these volunteers have been taking in and this is a very powerful tool that the body has to adjust and adapt to the food intake. So here is what the data showed. When people lost weight, about 10% of their body weight, their basal metabolic rate dropped by about 250 calories in a day. And this was the mechanism by which the body will reduce how much energy you use at rest. So it will counteract the effect of you not eating as much. For those who lost about 20% of their extra weight, the basal metabolic rate dropped by about 300 calories. If you think about it, this is roughly the same energy you would burn if you do 30 to 40 minute workout every day. That's just your body simply cancelled it out by reducing your basal metabolic rate. So why does the body do this? It's trying to defend it's fat storage. So even if you are eating less, your body is adjusting behind the scene, burning less, conserving more. And when you combine that with the increased hunger we talked about earlier, you're not just fighting your appetite, you are fighting your metabolism too. This is why so many people hit a plateau in their diet. It's not because they have slipped through or started cheating. It's not laziness. It is metabolic adaptation. Your body is doing exactly what it is meant to do, protecting you. And it does that by keeping your weight within a range it believes to be a safe range. That range is now widely known as the weight set point. So now we have uncovered the two ways your body fights back during your weight loss journey. First, it turns up your hunger to increase your calories in and then it slows down how much energy you burn particularly at rest, which controls your calories out. This is not failure. It's your body defending itself like it always has by holding into the fat stores for survival. But here is the big question. What is it defending? Why that specific weight and not lower? It all comes down to something called the weight set point. This is your brain's internal idea of what your normal weight should be. It's not based on your goals. It's not about your health. It's not even about logic. It's all about biology. The weight set point is shaped by a mix of factors. Your genes, your previous diet history, especially yo-yo dieting, your sleep pattern, your stress level, your food habits and years of food restrictions. All these plays a role in controlling and deciding how your brain perceives what your safe normal range of weight should be. In fact, most people already know what their weight set point is because it is that frustrating weight range your body keeps drifting back to whenever you try to lose the weight. So the real question is, can it be changed? In the next video, we will dive into how the weight set point works and how you can actually reprogram it. Because until you understand the set point, you're not just dieting against your habits, you are dieting against your brain. So hit subscribe and let's move forward together.